If you ever need anywhere to, to mount this bumper, um, uh, I have a spot for it. Well, I'd be able to put the bumpers back on and still keep them. There you go. What are you thinking? What are you got for it? Uh, for wheels? No, no. What are you talking about? What are you talking about putting the bumper? No, on? if you got to toss the bumper, I'll take it. <laughs> I'll put it on the wall. <laughs> don't throw this away. You, you just don't find those are called towel ta ta hangers. Yeah. There you go. Hey, that's exactly what I'd use them for in my house. Yeah. <laughs> yes. No, no, the idea would be we'd be able to swap the rims and tires, stop ways that are on there now, back on, put the phone cord back on, and take it to a classic show. Yeah. You know, like Pebble Beach or something like that. But then, but, you know, when it's time for good guys at Del Mar, you know, we could just remove the bumpers and swap the tires and wheels and have a whole different. We just we just hung a towel off the front bumper to make sure that uh, you weren't lying to us, and it looks it good. works. We are rolling. All right, so we are on to our next build. The uh, the Vic is gone. Back to Tim Allen's shop and the high yeah. Good job, everybody, especially you. You put a lot of work into that. Um, That's a ah. <laughs> So behind me is a 1936 core. Uh, this is one of the, actually the first front wheel drive car built in America. This is gonna be our first front wheel drive car ever yeah. as well. First conversion. Yeah. So uh, what do you have to put on there, Snow? Well, what we have here is what's gonna actually reside in the core. Now it's gonna have to do, you know, make a little bit of changes to it. So this is a Tesla R drive unit and we're gonna, you know, remove the inverter and we're gonna get to this state right here. And then after that, we're gonna use Eddie B's new design for the divorced inverter, and boom, that's going under the hood, detached from this. Exactly, so um, this car is owned by Simple Green. Um, the owner really likes a lot of chrome, a lot of bling, a lot of you know shiny stuff, which we're really good at here at Revolt Systems. Uh, so basically I designed a divorced inverter kit that could go on the large drive unit. So we could remove basically half of this motor almost and whip. This car's pretty narrow up front. It also needs a transaxle. And for the, you guys that think I'm crazy about putting, you know, a, a large drive unit inside a front wheel drive car, well, guess what? I'm not the first one to do it. Toyota RAV4 did it. And also Mercedes, which one was it? B250E. The B250E Mercedes also had a large drive unit up front. So those two vehicles did have the same motor. Obviously, they have a lot more room up front than we do, so that's why we have a divorced inverter kit. Uh, we've already done a lot of scanning on this car, measuring and specking. This should work just fine. Uh, the axles are beefed up in this, and we're also going to have to do a lot of work up there to make that work. Um, but once again, we're going to use a Tesla large drive unit on it with a divorced inverter kit that we produce here at Revolt Systems to get this thing completely repowered. We're also going to turn it down. We're not going to give them the full 450 or 400 plus kilowatts. This car doesn't need it. The owner wants to be able to cruise. Uh, he's basically located in Seal Beach, California. And his plan is to take this vehicle, drive it down the Strand, take it up and down the beach, Santa Monica, so on and so forth. Probably not going to be going on any like speed over 60, 70 miles an hour ever. Um, well, not to mention, I mean, it's front wheel drive and you're not going to have all the traction. So, no, really don't need that. big heavy car. It's going to be a fun cruiser. Uh, I tried to talk him out of this build in the very beginning. And he said, look, this car doesn't drive. The motor was built in 1936. There's no parts left on the counter. It's made by Lycoming. They make aircraft air engines. They don't make car engines anymore and they have it for a very long time. So finding any replacement parts for this with a drivetrain or anything in this car is very difficult. So he said, look, I wanna be able to drive it on the weekends, on the weekdays. This is the easiest setup. He goes in, turns the key and never has to worry about failure to the drivetrain. Um, so you know what? For all the folks, I can already you can see it. You can see the, the you know the, the feedback the boil. coming in, and you know how we're desecrating an American classic. But the truth of the matter is, right? A lot of cars, similar fashion. You know, people put an LS under the hood. There's no difference. All we're doing is putting an electric motor under the hood, right? Yep. But with that being said, we are literally taking something that was a really nice looking paperweight, right? And we're turning it into something functional. So we're bringing this American classic into the modern age via modern technology. Well, to this point, this car was parked in a garage. He never drove it because every time he did, something would break, something would go wrong, and he was afraid to get stranded. 
So now he could take this classic, show it off, parade it around, and enjoy it. That's what I want to do. With the confidence that it's going to come out of the grass and make them back. So for those of you guys that hate us for all this desecration of American muscle, next time you see an LS and a Ford, back at you. Let's take a look at the rest of this vehicle and what we're doing. So here we are. Back under the cord, and ADB is going to give you a walk down of what the initial design is going to look like here. Okay. So where are we going to mount the motor, ADB? Well, the motor is going to go somewhere up here. Um, we have about this much room for width, and this is exactly why we're using the Divorce LDU kit, is because we don't have the width to put a full LDU kit with the inverter mounted of it, because these frame wells, rails in this car, they pinch together towards the front of this vehicle. Um, this vehicle does have a very unique look. Uh, they have it, they call it the coffin front end. Um, you'll see that on tractors too. It's pretty cool from that era. And everything kind of pinches together, big bubbly fenders on it. So it's kind of narrow up here in the frame rails. Uh, most modern cars are a little bit different. And uh, these are very tall. So we have a limited amount of room to work with this vehicle. Luckily, it already has some upgraded axles that we're going to kind of work around and work with. And then we have all this room back here for a couple of batteries. Uh, they do want to upgrade this vehicle in a lot of different ways. Not just that they want well, electric. Now, with that being said, though, okay, so you said you want to mount the motor here, but I mean, I see steering components, I see brake components. I don't see how you're going to get that in there. So, well, what are you going to do there? The owner has asked us to upgrade not just the drivetrain, but everything else in the car. So, he is a little bit older. Um, he likes to drive with his hands down low. This is kind of a cruiser. He likes power steering. This car did not come with power steering. We all kind of Forget about the luxuries in these new vehicles. These old vehicles, you had manhandled that thing. That's why they it's giant steering wheels, more leverage. So we are going to put a power steering column in this. Also, we're going to put power brakes in this vehicle. We are adding weight to the vehicle, so therefore we have to add more um, braking power. Uh, we also do have regenerative braking. Can't rely on that all the time, so we have to be able to upgrade the brake system here as well. So on that note, okay. we're going to be changing a lot of the stuff now. One of the main focuses of this vehicle is not to chop it all the way up and completely rebuild the whole vehicle. Um, we want to be able to return this to gas if anyone ever wants to do that in the future. This is an icon. It is a part of history, and we like preserving those types of things. Um, so everything that we're doing is, in this vehicle is going to be removable or unboltable. Uh, we're going to do very little welding on it. Um, most of that's going to be in the back for the batteries and underneath the car. But once again, everything could go in reverse if, if the client decides to go back to gas one day. Okay, so well, it looks like the motor install is going to be pretty straightforward. Now, let me ask you this. I see a lot of empty space back there. What are we going to do with batteries? Well, um, let's take a look at the back of the car and move our way that way. Well, let's do it. The bottom of this car is fairly flat. Uh, I put a straight edge on it the other day. And basically, we have a nice plane going all the way across. We are going to be using Tesla batteries for this. So we're going to put 14 modules in this car. It doesn't need all 16. Once again, this is not going to be a crazy hot rod with a ton of power. It's going to be more of a cruiser. So we do have a lot of room in this car. And what are we missing back here? Well, well so I think a little gas tank missing and uh, we don't have a rear diff. Yep. So no rear differential. That means there's no tunnel in this car, no drive line. So we have all this area back here to actually put a battery pack underneath it. This does have a 12 volt battery. It sticks down quite a bit. We're not going to be quite this far low, but we are going to tuck in a battery pack that bolts to the bottom of this car. It's going to be protected with really, really thick aluminum with a bash guard up front, just in case they run into any problems or have to go over something. And we'll be able to keep the center of gravity very, very low as well. So I'm guessing we're going to relocate the emergency brake and this is a really important piece of the car. Oh, yeah. Fuel pump, man. What are we doing with that? <laughs> That's going in the trash can. That looks like a paperweight right there. <laughs> but, yeah, no, well, I'm, seriously, though, this actually, with this, you know, uh, pocket up here and the flatness of the car, it looks like this is going to be pretty straightforward in putting the batteries under here. Yeah. So. Now, we say that, but we're always going to run into a bunch of, yeah. what do you call Gotchas, right? Gotcha. Yeah. So, Maddie knows all about the gotchas because he's usually the one dealing with all of them. Um, but yeah, we do have quite a bit of room in this vehicle. We do have to upgrade the suspension in it. We are adding some weight to the rear of the car that was never here before. Uh, the gas tank was 100 pounds, let's yeah, just say. Roughly 100 pounds. We're adding 300. We're going to be putting a 350-pound pack back there. So 
Once yeah. again, beef up the leaf springs on it, put some real shocks on it. These shock absorbers are from 1936. These yeah. are like a you lever. Have a look at that. This is pretty interesting. They're pretty cool, but uh, the damn thing is just not going to be enough for what we're doing to the vehicle. Yeah, that's not, that's not going to cut it. Um, so once again, like I said earlier, we're going to try not to cut up this car and do a bunch of shock hoops and everything else. So we are going to design a system that bolts up to close to where this used to be mount. Yeah. and have a, a shock with a helper spring on it. Uh, we might add another pack to this as well. We'll cross that bridge when we get there. Uh, right now, what we're trying to do is strip everything out of here that we don't need, all the fuel lines, electronics that are antiquated that we won't be using, like the fuel pump and everything else. Yeah. Getting a nice, brand new canvas that we could start over with. This car does have a lot of cool features to it that are going to help us in this particular build. Um, but uh, it's still going to be a lot of work to get this thing put together properly and uh, done safely as well. Since the battery pack is going underneath the car like a Tesla, we are going to have to beef up the bottom of it quite a bit. In the rare case of he drives over something, picks up something off the road, yeah. and it gets lodged in the battery pack. So we want to make sure that it's nice and thick and protected. So we're going to go extra heavy on, on the battery pack for that one. What else we got? I think that's pretty much it. Um, this, like I said, the build is in full swing now. And... You know, do you have a prediction on how long this is going to take? I want to do it in four months, but I think we're probably going to run into like a six month build on this one. And as we're trying to do these faster and faster, but once again, this is a custom build. This is not a cookie cutter that we've done before. This is completely different from everything we've done, especially with the front wheel yeah. drive. Now, while I, I have learned not to doubt the boys at Revolt, I think six months is a very uh, aggressive goal, but it's got to be done by SEMA. And what is it now? Yeah, it's the end of February. It's the end of February, so, so figure we're already into March. So April, May, June, July, August, September, October. Yeah, we better get this done before yeah. SEMA. So before SEMA, for sure, this will be at SEMA this year. They already got a booth, so come yeah. check it out. It's going to be a beautiful, beautiful debut. Also, I think the Vic's going to be there as well. Yeah. Fingers yeah. crossed. Um, so we are on a roll with these yeah. builds. So the Rewell boys are getting it done. Yep. That, there's no doubt in that. We'll jump up in top and show you guys what we're going to do with the instrument cluster, too. Uh, this thing's so gorgeous. This is going to be nice. Yeah. 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 So let's drop the car down and take a look upstairs. All right. Let's do it. So check out this car. Um, I love this era of car. I know Snow doesn't really care for vehicles this old. Not his gig. But me, personally, the big bubbly round. My mate. <laughs> All this stuff is amazing. Also, there's a lot of intricacies in this vehicle that kind of were a first of its era. Yeah. Front-wheel drive was one of them. What else? Front drive, yeah. This is, like you said, Eddie B said, this was the first American-made front-wheel drive car. But with that, I think a lot of people don't realize that there was a 21-year-old engineer that designed this car. And the first ever- 26, was it? Pop-up headlights. Nah, I think he's like 21. Yeah, a young kid. Yeah, a young kid, but pop-up headlights. So you screw the handle. And the headlights pop up in the front. Working clock. See, that's cool. I love gauges. I love needles. Yeah. I, I, we're we're going to try to preserve this as much as possible. But obviously, we don't need oil pressure. Yeah. We don't need RPM. We don't need a lot of this stuff. Um, fuel gauge is going to change. But we're going to keep the same dash look, same everything else. Yeah. All this stuff. AM radio, that's got to stay. I think that thing's pretty cool. And a lot of people have seen you know, videos with us. And you know, one of the things that I harp on the most that makes a build classy you look at it can't tell that it's been electrified that's what this front panel is going to retain its original look and one of the other things that's really unique about this and i'll let it be explain that to you how about that shifter oh this is one of my favorite parts of this car i can't get enough of this thing it's like a fidget toy if i ever find another one of these cars wrecked i'm taking this thing out of it putting it on my desk um this was the is the original shifter from this vehicle, and it has four different positions and a reverse. So we are reversed, first, second, third, and fourth gear. Now, I want to reuse this to run our motor. Now, we don't have gears in the car, but we have three positions. We have neutral, drive, and reverse. Isn't there a problem with this, though? In 1936, I would figure everything was mechanical. Everything was. But that's electric. We actually traced this back, and I was looking for linkages. There's no linkage. 
It's wires. So you're telling me in 1936, electric controls. Fly by wire transmission. There you Isn't go. Isn't that crazy? I mean, this is almost 100 years ago. Yeah. Well, and like I said, I mean, the car was, it was just cutting edge, right? I mean, this, a lot of this stuff, I mean, take the pop-up headlights, for example. It laid the groundwork for cars, you know, today. Exactly. That have pop-up headlights. Crazy. So, I mean, there's even stuff in here that I don't even know how this works yet, but I, I, this has something to do with the windshield wipers. And it's DeVille cut front. And wasn't this the first time they did this? This is the first the DeVille windshield. First time they used the windshield of this nature. Okay. Yeah. Well, once again, we're trying to prever- preserve a lot of this stuff, keep the nostalgia of the car. Um, and everything you see here at the very end of this build will almost look identical. Yeah. So now there's also a couple of hints of modern technology. What's in that drawer right there? Oh, we got an old school iPhone cable. Yeah. Okay. It's almost as old as car. Yeah. Well, <laughs> and then over here, we got controls to a modern stereo that's in the drawer. <laughs> yep. As I said, we're going to preserve a lot of the stuff, change yeah. a lot of those things out, and we're going to make this car beautiful and stunning. You won't be able to even tell that it's electric. Yeah. So follow us on this build. Check us out. Like, subscribe. Talk a bunch of crap downstairs. That's fine. We're used to it. We're here to desecrate another American classic. Oh, we'll see you guys soon. See you guys next time. Follow the Vivo Follow Garage. The Follow the build. <laughs> I love those doors. Suicide doors. Can't go wrong there, brother. Look at this. It's just massive. Such a big cloud. This thing is two blocks long. <laughs>